the Trading Post on this Wednesday morning. Time now for our Fulton County Community Foundation report. Brian Johnson joins us. Good morning. Good morning, Randy. How are you? A little damp. A little damp. Yeah, yeah, you made it over. humid, not rain in. I'm not sure you can distinguish the difference now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to maybe that weekend cool down. Uh, yeah, you can't get here quick enough. My garden is like in the rain. It did. It did. So. Got a nice drink last night. So. It did. So. How's things going at the Community well, Foundation? We've got a few things going on that we'll talk about. Of course, reminder about um, some of our matches that we have an opportunity, thanks to Lily Endowment. Um, they're matching gifts towards community funds. We'll talk about a couple of grants here later, and our guest will talk about one of the grants that we made with those community funds. Um, but they are matching gifts to community funds, $2 for every dollar donated. How are we, so we doing on that? We are at 216, just over $216,000 raised. Awesome. Our goal is 375, so we're over halfway there. Awesome. So pretty exciting. So if anybody's interested in that, or that can be used to start a new fund. If you want to start a named family fund, we have a lot of families that have done that, and um, it's been a great way to to honor a legacy. So um, I do want to give one shout out um, to um, Caroline Jones. Uh, we lost Caroline a couple weeks ago. I know she was a, a very private person, but um, wanted to say thank you for her years of service on our board. Um, it's always tough when we lose a board member. Yeah. And Caroline was involved in so many things, and we talked about community funds. She did start the Fultz Family Fund because that's her family's legacy. Um, she was um, very involved in, in so great to work with and we're going to miss Caroline. Yes. Some other things coming up. Applications. Uh, I think that's the theme of the day. Remember September 9th. It's always important. That date may be mentioned a couple of times here. So <laughs> first one we've got going on, um, Lily Endowment Community Scholarships. Yes. That's an opportunity for Fulton County students who are graduating this year, graduating in the 24-25 school year. Um, one of the requirements is they need to be a Fulton County resident. Um, graduate from a area high school. Um, we get the question, well, what happens if my high school is located outside of Fulton County? So we have that situation with Tippecanoe New Valley. A lot of Fulton County residents attend Tippecanoe New Valley. Um, it's a county of residents. Okay. So um, one of the requirements is that the student um, to receive the scholarship attend a college or university in the state of Indiana. So if you're planning to go to the state, there, there are some really awesome choices. We're fortunate to have some really great schools and really close to us mm -hmm. as well. So um, this scholarship pays for full tuition and a $900 book stipend for up to four years or eight semesters. Um, every once in a while we'll get questions about that. Um, one thing that we have is students walking out of high school with maybe a semester or even a year of college credit so um, that opens up some opportunities there um, for that and remember that september 9th deadline date that i said yes deadline to apply for this lily endowment community scholarship is september 9th mm -hmm. so okay. i know we've got a lot of students have already started that um, if you have not started that or if your application is in process, make sure that you get that done by September 9th. It'll be here before you know it. It'll be here. Make sure you click that <laughs> submit button now, down at the bottom of the application. So, um, talking about September 9th, we've got another deadline that's coming up. Women's Giving Circle. Mm -hmm. That group is currently accepting applications for grants. We ask for a three to five minute video. Oh, have a little fun with little that. video yeah. grant application. Yes. We always have some fun and creative videos, whether it be somebody walking around a room showing stuff off with a phone, or uh, we've had drones involved mm -hmm. in making videos before, and uh, be creative. And I think you said it best last month when we talked about this, if you're not sure how to do that, get a hold of a student. Get a hold of a student. We had an organization <laughs> a couple years ago say, well, we'd like to apply for this, but I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And, it's a youth serving organization. I said, ask a couple of the kids. <laughs> they yeah. turned around, put together a really amazing, when I say they, the kids involved yeah. in the group got creative, put together a great video, and they actually received a grant because of that. So, yeah. pretty cool. So, three to five minutes video. Um, there is a budget page that we ask 
organizations to fill out again September 9th. That's a theme that was, I don't think that was intentional that we had both those <laughs> deadlines, but September 9th is the deadline for um, the application. Um, if you are interested in either of these, those applications can be started in the information on our website, nicf.org. If you're looking for scholarship, it's the scholarship page on Fulton County. If you're looking for Women's Giving Circle, there's a specific Women's Giving Circle underneath the Fulton County section of our website. And then um, those Women's Giving Circle grant applications will be reviewed by the members on October 1st at 6 p.m. Their annual granting event happens at the Times Theater. So a neat place. if there are ladies listening who are part of this organization, put that on your calendar. If you're not part of it and you want to be a part of it, dues are $120 a year. Um, the group gives out five to $10,000 in grants each year and really amazing to see the impact. Um, it's almost $90,000 since the organization was started with just that $120 dues from the members. So, really great to see. And what better place to watch video game applications than on the big screen at the right. Times Theater. So, yeah, get, yeah. get those in. Yeah, so looking forward to that. Um, you've mentioned a couple of these things happening this weekend, but um, we've been able to grant to support a couple of these organizations. Of course, the Times Theater coming up Friday night like the Beatles, oh, yeah. like George Harrison, an evening with George, I was talking with Julie yesterday and she said, well, you know, it's interesting, this gentleman on his schedule, if you look at it, his schedule goes from Liverpool, the Liverpool in England, yeah. to Rochester, Indiana. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, that's, that's a broad spectrum. Yes, it's, yeah. al it's also an evening celebrating a local artist, Jim Scott. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't been in a theater recently, you walk in and you look at the walls and you say, this is amazing. Um, they're going to have some of Jim's art for sale. I heard rumor that some of that may be available online to see ahead of time, so mm -hmm. check that out as well. Um, so that's coming up on Friday night, and then on Saturday, I hear a rumor there's going to be a festival. There is. That's what I hear too. That's what I heard on the radio, yeah, so it must be true. The fourth annual. The fourth annual. Starting off with a parade um, in the morning and then some really great music. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there's a little bit of music for everybody. I was going to say, yeah, that lineup is, uh, is all, you know, yeah. for anybody and everybody. It's a nice yeah. mix. Uh, and food. Oh, I heard rumors. Plenty of food. food here, so. If you go walk away yeah. hungry, it's your own fault. <laughs> oh, I, I saw tacos and ribs and yeah. all that kind of stuff on yeah. the list. And you can't go wrong with no, all that stuff. No, no. So, so check that out on Saturday. Um, we've been able to grant to the theater a number of times and um, over the years to help get that organization up and going and it's really awesome when you see the impact of that. And then um, this year we are able to provide a $5,000 grant to the theater or to the um, Nickel Plate Art and Music Festival awesome. to help with um, the different things that happen. Um, we've got a really great stage, some, like we said, great music activities for kids throughout the day. Um, I hear the parade's getting pretty big. Yes, so I heard there are up over 50-some entries already. So. And I hear a rumor are going to be play-by-play -play on WWE. Uh, that's what they say. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Still trying to figure out who they is. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So. Somebody got a mouse, I think. All right, well, we got to the exciting part of the program. We have a guest with us today. We do. Um, we have Michelle Maroney representing the Brent Blacketer Memorial Sports Complex. Good Welcome, morning. Michelle. Thanks. Um, we talked about some of the dollars that we've granted this year because of those community funds. Um, earlier this year, we had an opportunity. Um, Blacketer approached us with some ideas and some needs, um, and we were able to provide a $15,000 grant to help them get some projects started, and then also a $15,000 matching opportunity, which when I originally asked Michelle, I said, well, let's help promote this matching opportunity. And then a couple weeks ago, she sent me a message and said, hey, we're done. <laughs> yeah. So I said, well, let's talk about <laughs> what you're doing out there. So first question, tell us a little bit about the Black Hitter Sports Complex. What is it for somebody who's listening that may not know? So if your child is involved in softball, or soccer, you should know about Brent Blackett or Sports Complex. Um, both of those events are held out there. 
Um, softball is maybe from preschool age to, I'd say, middle school, because then I think it transfers yeah. over to the middle school. Um, and then soccer is preschool to high school, but we also have an adult league now, so. So me and Randy could go out and play? Yes, we're not, we're would not you really like soccer to join? Wow. Players. Yes. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, Talk yeah. Talk about yes. throwing under the bus yeah. there. Yeah. Yes, you can play. <laughs> no. Yes. You don't want me to play. <laughs> <laughs> but that's interesting. I did not know that I uh, started an adult league. That's, yes. that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, so it's nice. A lot of um, a lot of returning soccer players from high school come. I mean, there was a guy who drove from Chicago every Sunday just to play because he used to play for the high school. So okay. it's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, yeah. a lot of fun. I'll be spending some time there tonight. So yes. maybe if you can make the weather nice, about six thirty. Yeah, that'd be all right. That. That'd be nice when this. So, um, so you talked a little bit about some of the sports yes. that play out there. Um, I guess one of the things that I'm always amused by and and really appreciative when you step back and look at it. Um, my sons have both played soccer out there, and some of the places that we go to are literally a field with lines and two goals painted on them. Yes, I've been those places as well. <laughs> <laughs> not not part of this grant, but some previous grants are some, some really great things. There's concessions, there's yes. bathrooms, facilities. Real bathrooms. Real bathrooms. <laughs> that was a big deal when you went from... That was a big having, deal. Having just some temporary facilities to permanent and yes. really appreciative. So. That leads us into talking a little bit about some of the projects that are have happened, I would say, because a couple of them are already almost all the way done, yes. and projects that are coming up. Tell us a little bit about, let's start with softball. Tell us a little bit about the the goals for the projects with softball. Yeah, so up. softball, they want to get all new dugouts. Um, some of them, like the roof is just getting worn out and maybe be, going to become unsafe soon. Cracks in the blocks and the concrete. So. We just want it to be safe and look nice. We have a nice facility. We want to keep that going. Um, and so that, Janelle Mulligan, she is the project manager and she's also the president um, of softball. So it's been wonderful since she's joined. I think she's super helpful and just wants all positive things. So. She's heading that up and getting hopefully her last quote and then we'll get started on that since we met our match. However, you can still mail money to <laughs> Brett Blackader, P.O. Box 604, because I'm sure we still have some funds to gather. Yeah, and you always have a list of projects that you say. Oh, nice always. To, nice to be able to do Absolutely. This. So we're, we're speaking with Michelle Maroney this morning, representing Blackader Sports Complex. You just talked about softball. so. Soccer. I hear a rumor yes. that there's some projects that are going on or may have already be done. Yes. With soccer. Pretty much ours is finished. We just have to finish up the grass around the edges of our new concrete. But it's nice. You walk in the gate and we have some viewing pads. The picnic tables are on there. So now when Corey's mowing, he doesn't have to move anything. <laughs> um, that we have some high school bleachers again and they're on concrete pads. So we don't have to move those. Those would really tear up the grass. So it's just nice. It's it's easier. Plus, if we have any wheelchairs come in, they can yeah. be right on that concrete. So it it looks good, and yeah. we've gotten lots of compliments, and I'm super yeah. thankful. That's for sure. And there's bleachers now too. Bleachers, yes, finally, yes. <laughs> Not all over, but at least the high school field, and yeah. then that's where we use middle school in the spring. So it's definitely awesome. So I'm going to put you kind of on the spot here because I didn't ask you this. Any estimate on how many kids play in a year between softball and soccer? So um, in the spring, we probably have around 200. Then in the fall, it's anywhere from 200 to 250 just because that's our home season. Don't really travel as much. Um, then adults, I think we had up to 60-something this okay. year. And then we also do a summer camp. Um, it's only three days. I really don't remember. Usually, maybe 30 to 60 kids will do yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. Um, we change it up every year, so it just depends. Yeah. If we have the nights where they can just bring money and just join whenever, I think sometimes we have a better turnout. 
but sometimes we want to have a number in advance because we make sure everyone has a ball. That way they just bring their own ball to every, you know, evening. But we try, I mean, we have stuff almost year round. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also tournaments. Yes. You know, you go out there sometimes. And if you've never been to Blackett or on a soccer night or a softball night, I challenge you to go out and find a parking spot. Oh, it's, it's a hopping it's, place. There, there are yes. so many parking. It's really awesome to see yes. the participation. So, but I know softball has some tournaments that they bring. They do. Well. They do. So I don't even know how all those work or who's in charge of them, but I do know they are so busy that they always ask us not to come. So we usually block off those days for softball because I think that whole place is packed as well and they usually bring out of town teams. Um, and it's nice. I think yeah. it's it's good for them. Yeah. And it's it's neat. The facility has multiple softball diamonds, multiple yes. soccer fields, so you have all kinds of age groups. Um, one thing I appreciate as a parent is if I can be at the same location, I'm not going two different places <laughs> with two different kids. Yes. Um, they may not play at the exact same time, but sometimes all I have to do is pick up my chair and turn it around and yes. watch the other field. Well, and I've loved that from the perspective of I'm, you know, on the soccer board, on the black eater board. I'm not on the softball board, but I do, my daughter plays softball. So at least we're all in the same area and I just have to walk across yeah. the park. I've always been very thankful for that. <laughs> yeah. So. Brian, so, I'm going to put you on the spot okay. since you put Michelle on the spot. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. How long has the Brent Blacker complex been there? It was early 2000s. Okay. Um, I think the initial start of it started right before 2000, um, but activities have been going on for basically 25 years yeah. out there. So And growing every year. And growing every year. Yeah. And we, we've seen... Um, improvements that have happened out there. You talk about things like the pads that were just added for yes. soccer. Um, a couple years ago we had the opportunity to help with some softball um, accessible areas. So yes. now it's set up so somebody can take a wheelchair or a yes. walker and roll right up to a fence and watch a game yeah. that their child or grandchild may be a part of. So, um, and it's it's been neat to see kind of the growth on the soccer side too as yes. far as fields i think there's yeah. there's one field that sometimes it gets used but it seems like this year it's always getting used yeah We're because we did yeah We're we added a little and, field last year and it was the first time and i was glad when we ordered all those field numbers i said you better just get an extra well then we actually did i was like oh that's <laughs> great yeah. sweet yeah, yeah. so it, it's been a project that has grown and, yes. and really in great shape um things like irrigation that yep. people don't see that keep the fields in nice shape. Yes. You, you mentioned the mowing. I'm sure it doesn't take any time to mow out, oh does it? Yeah. I think Corey's, honestly, I think he spends like seven to 10 hours a week and, yeah. and it always looks beautiful. It he does. does a great job. It does. And, yes. and just a really great facility yeah. um, for families. And we mentioned some of the improvements that have happened over the years, um, concessions, yes, restroom facilities. Yeah. Um, just field improvements, things mm -hmm. like that are what go into making these opportunities available. We talk about having things for kids to do and yes. soccer is a really good thing. Yeah. Keeps them in shape. Keeps them warm. Gets them out, out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> we we'd probably be in better shape if me and you played. You suppose? Yeah. Adult uh, league. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. There's a lot of running involved in soccer. Yes, most definitely. Yeah, okay, well, yes. keep, keep That's why I'm right? in the concession selling. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do it. That's right. <laughs> so another question, volunteers. Yes. You have an awesome group of volunteers. This organization is entirely volunteer. If somebody's yes. listening and says, you know what, maybe my kid's been involved or my grandkids, but I'd really like to get involved as a volunteer. Maybe I don't want to play on an adult yeah. soccer league. Yes. But I have some time to volunteer. How do they go about doing that, yeah. either for softball or soccer? Or sure. I mean, as a whole? yeah. Well, Janelle Mulligan is the president of softball. I'm the president of soccer. Um, Tiffany Lukens, which... So sorry, Tiffany. Put her as Tiffany Futrell. <laughs> Teresa asked me about that with our Optimus picture. I totally forgot she was married. <laughs> but anyway, she's the director of Blackadder. And so 
we all do a lot of things. We're always willing for people to help. We would love good people help, but it yeah. takes a lot. Like people are busy just even as parents. And so it's really nice if we have people who want to go the extra mile to volunteer. Yeah. Right. Because it takes all of us. I mean, coaches, we couldn't do it without coaches, you know. Yeah. Um, we love we love concession help. We try to have a board member in there at all times just in case we need something. But always, always thankful for helpers. Yeah. When, um from a family that has benefited from this and from the community as a whole. Um, I'd like to say thank you to, to you and the whole Blackadder group mm -hmm. um, providing providing these opportunities for our kids to participate, have a good time, learn some skills. Um, I think growing up I played sports and some of the biggest life skills that I learned were through athletics. Yeah. They weren't always about athletics, but they were learned through athletics and participating as part of a team. Um, yeah. it, it's really great when we have um, people. I, I asked you earlier who they was. And <laughs> they. One of my favorite things is somebody. <laughs> yes. You know, you, you, somebody should do something about that. Well, we've got a group of volunteers that said somebody should do something about having some youth sports, and yes. boom, we have an awesome facility at Blackener, So. Yeah. Um, we've been speaking with Michelle Maroney. Michelle, any final thoughts as we wrap up the show? Um, no, I'm just, I'm really thankful for people who appreciate us, know that we do it out of the goodness of our hearts. We don't get paid anything. We pay the same as all the other people for their children to do it. And we're just thankful for any donations, you know, kind words, helpfulness, any of it. We're, yeah. We are grateful. And... and I would say I appreciate your enthusiasm. I never run across Michelle and she's like, oh, this just isn't working. She's always like, this is an awesome thing. And well, I was a little excited. nervous about the match. I was like, okay. Yeah. So they invited me for a meeting and I go, oh, well, this is going to be fine. We're going to do this. This is going to be fine. And we did it. Yeah. Like, it was wonderful. And had some awesome community support. Yes. Oh, really wait. I do love. Support. I love love small town life. I yeah. think it just, I think it matters knowing people all your life and yeah. just knowing that they show up for other people when it matters. Yeah. And, and it's, it goes back to that somebody. Yes. <laughs> yes. Somebody said, Hey, we can help with this. And boom, we have pretty awesome things. Yes, I agree. Well, on behalf of the community, thank you, Michelle, yes. to you and all the folks involved, yes. the, all of the volunteers, um, Lots of all good the people. donors that mm -hmm. make Blackadder soccer and softball happen. It's pretty cool. So. Well, a couple of reminders. Remember that September 9th deadline? Mm, yes. The Lily Endowment Community Scholarship, Women's Giving Circle grant applications. Get those in. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us about that. Um, you can find us online, nicf.org. That's where you can find those applications. Like us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 574. 224-3223 or stop by our office 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. Right, Michelle, thanks for joining us and we'll look forward to talking to you again next week or thanks next month. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Johnny you. Down, that's going to do it for the morning show. Have a great Wednesday. Everybody.